Hello everyone, this is the six mark questions that I promised I would upload today for the paper that you have tomorrow is the AQA uh, paper one, six mark questions. I'm not going to waste time. So what I want to do, I'm going to just walk through the slides by clicking the question and the answers. This is a very basic PowerPoint. I did not fan, put any fancy stuff. You don't need that now. All you need are the facts, just the questions and the answers. I'm not calling them my predictions, but I'm just saying these are questions I feel I still need to go over because the students I'm working with, these are some of the areas they still wanted me to do bits and pieces. These are the early, early top, earlier top. Some of them are the early topics you did uh, way back in um, year nine, and some people forget those. So without wasting much time, I'm going to just take you through the slides and some of them are three questions, format questions. I picked them from different places, uh, end of unit test and all of that. So this is um, me just giving you extra support. If you want ask any, have any questions to ask, please ask me. I'm very, very busy at the moment, but I'll try and see if I can answer them. And then good luck with it tomorrow. Yes. Um, I thought I would not speak more. Um, I have to, so I'll just probably just read through the questions really quickly because I want it to be a really short video. So if, you, uh, if you're if you not too sure about setting things, just pause because I don't want each slide to last for longer than um, 30 seconds so that I can quickly um, upload it today for you to have for your revision. So this is a question about designing a practical to test the hypothesis is a six mark question. Let's look at the answer. Next slide. So here the emphasis is on the number of people in each group. You definitely have two groups, one for the smokers and one the other for non-smokers. And then you get them to do a named um, exercise like jogging on the spot for one minute. Then you measure their heart rate before and after the exercise then you want to calculate the increase in heart rate of each person when you add all of these together and take an average, you get the average for each group. And at the end, you can compare and make your conclusions. The variables to note are also here. That is the variables to keep constant. They also highlighted on point five. This one is a question about testing for proteins. I did a bit of a uh, food test on these. Uh, six mark question so remember this is the bure test and you need to wear goggles if they ask you for precaution please include the specific precaution you will take for each experiment the circulatory system is composed of the blood vessels and heart so they tell you here what is carried in the plasma you need to mention two others so it could be any of carbon dioxide, glucose, or amino acid. Remember that the, just use this opportunity to remind yourself of the other parts of blood, the red blood cells, which carry oxygen, uh, oxygen around the body. And you have the platelets, which are responsible for blood clotting. So if you have a wound, blood platelets help you to clot, and the white blood cells fight off microbes and gives you your immunity. This is a question about a respiration, it links respiration with providing energy and oxygen breaking down glucose. So why would be an advantage for, uh, would it be an advantage for an athlete to train at a um, high altitude if there's a huge amount of red blood cells per centimeter cube? So the answer is there, more blood, the emphasis here is more. You must say that there's more red blood cells, therefore more oxygen um, is breaking down more glucose to release more energy. And that's the process of aerobic respiration. It's a question about plants showing certain deficiency. I picked it from, I think, last year's paper or one of uh, the practice papers. Yeah, but I think it's important to talk about it. So magnesium deficiency symptoms include yellow leaves, stunted growth. And then um, you need to explain how this deficiency causes these symptoms. Answer is on next slide. So the yellow leaves are due to lack of chlorophyll. There's less um, absorption um, of uh, so there's less photosynthesis and then if there's uh, less light absorption there's less photosynthesis photosynthesis with less photosynthesis the less glucose is produced here again it's about less less 
because you know if there is no enough glucose they cannot even convert glucose into proteins proteins are needed for growth so then we have stunted growth and the yellow uh, uh, leaves also clearly shows that they lack uh, chlorophyll now this is about monoclonal um, um antibody this is for triple science so to, for, for those bi of biology um, only so i'm going to really whisk through this to the next question and this is the um answer to that question This is the diagram, and again, remember, it's not for those doing um, combined science trilogy, it's for those doing triple, triple biology. Now, this is a calculation question. Remember, it's 10% of calculation on the biology paper. So it's saying, giving you some values and saying you should compare. Because it's asking you to compare, what you have to do, you have to ensure you calculate the, the amount they need for the calcium and the amount they need for the B, vitamin B12, in micrograms so that you can then compare the two. So this is the calculation. You do the one for the calcium first, do the one for the B12, and then you, step, you might you take away those two values, you get the answer by how much is one is one more amount of milk is needed to get one as compared with the other. So drawing of a nerve cell and a root hair cell, he said give the function of the nerve cell, describe one way a nerve cell is adapted for its function. You need to know all the ways anyway. Nerve cells carry electrical impulses and um, nerve cell, uh, um, a root hair cell is long. I'm sorry, a nerve cell is uh, carrying impulses, it is long. It has a myelin sheath layer um, for insulation. There are thousands of root hair cell plants. Explain how they help the plant. The plant root, you have a lot of hair cells. How is this a good thing to the plant? So it increases the surface area so that more water and more mineral ions can be absorbed quickly. When there is a large surface area, it's, made for, it's good for efficient um, exchange. In the lungs, you will find that because of lots of um, alveoli, there is a more efficient increase of this area for more efficient um, gas exchange in the lungs. I'll also use the opportunity to just quickly pop in the question, the issue of uh, having a um, thin layer. If the gas exchange surfaces are thin, then diffusion is faster because diffusion has a, a very short uh, th a layer to cross over. And another adaptation is in animals, a huge supply of blood vessel of blood. So if they have lots of blood capillaries, then there's an increased sort of a steep gradient. So there's more blood flowing, uh, there is uh, more blood or what the substance that is being pushed across more on one side from where it's flowing, the high concentration to low concentration is, is increased. So that's a very good thing. I thought I'd put a, a typical plant cell and then you can you you can label the parts and explain their functions. Everybody should know this and if you list these things, you if it's a six mark question, you can get all of these um, write all of these down, you get the full marks. Function of the nucleus, the mitochondria, ribosome, cell membrane, cell or vacuum, chloroplast, which contain chlorophyll, and the cytoplasm, all their functions you need to member this one is a question about calculation so you're given the magnification and the image size you rearrange your equation so that you can calculate it answers on the next slide okay and then the conversion is key so your answer should be in micrometer from millimeter to micrometer you multiply by a thousand I refer to this on the on the slide about the required practical. So those circles you're looking at, they are trapped air. And to avoid them, you have to lower the you have to lower the cover slip gently on a mounted pin so that you know it would be 
Abe. You will not, you will have where the Abe was being trapped. Some people say this nucleus is no, it's trapped air bubbles. So here's the answer. There are air bubbles trapped to avoid this problem. Lower the cover speed gently using a mounted needle. Now for this one, what is wrong with it is that it's too much um, dye. Mop it up with paper towel. So when observing a slide under the microscope, you must first use the lowest power lens. Why do you need to do this? The answer is on the next slide, obviously. The lowest objective lens has the highest field of view. As a, as a result, it is easier to locate the specimen, first of all, and then you can be, it can become easier for you to focus it if needs be. You need to see first. So the lower objective lens gives you a wide range of view so you can see your specimen. Again, root hair cells are adapted for the efficient absorption of water and mineral ions from the soil. Describe the processes by which they absorb water and mineral ions from the soil. Now, this is uh, asking about osmosis and active transport. So you need to explain semi-permeable membrane and you need to, I just pop here at the end, recall mitochondria. So if you go through this slide, if you explain it like that, you'll be able to get six mark. If it's asked as a six mark question, I found it on one of the papers or end of unit test, I think. Describe plant and animal defenses against diseases. I said this could be asked as a six mark question. This is what you will need to do. Plant defenses, thick cell wall that is tough for part, that part too tough for pathogens to penetrate through. Waxy cuticle, this is hard and tough to penetrate through. Dead cells on the back, they fall off and they take with them pathogens. So pathogens fall off and die. Then some produce antibacterial chemicals that can kill bacteria, obviously. For, hum for animals, the skin produces oils that kill microbes. Also, the dead top layer of the cells is too hard to penetrate. Nose have hair that keep out dust and pathogens. Trachea, stretch or bronchi, they have mucus that trap microbes and cilia that sweep them away. There's acid in the stomach, it's hydrochloric acid, it kills bacteria, and then white blood cells ingest pathogens and produce cells and uh, produce antibodies. Yeah, they, are, they produce antibodies. Antibodies are stored away to kill the microbes if they reinfect the body in, at a future date. So the lock and key principle of enzymes. These are the things you need to know to explain the lock and key principle of enzymes. And I have the diagram below. So this is what the diagram looks like. So you have this substrate, what is being broken that fits onto that lock and key perfectly. And then it breaks it into the products. So this, I itemize the explanation here. I am very hopeful that uh, this will help you um, rake in extra marks because revision, lastminute.com revision, which I'm doing is just to help you get additional marks and then remember a few things you have forgotten. Like I said, I didn't want this video to be more than 15 minutes. If you need to pause, pause. If you need to ask some more questions, ask. I'll check them at about eight o'clock today and I should be able to give, give um, answers if I find any questions I require my attention. So best of luck with this paper tomorrow once again. God bless you.